everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to look at some automotive plugs and connectors and some of the techniques I use to wire up a car and what plugs I prefer to use. All right, let's take a look at that now. Now I assume, just like I am not, uh, you're probably not a wiring professional, but you're just looking on YouTube for hints and tips and, and that kind of stuff on what to use and maybe what not to use and some basic techniques to make your wiring maybe look a little bit better and maybe be a little more reliable. So today I'm gonna just run through some things like how to easily twist wires together and why you might wanna do that. Uh, a couple of different kinds of connectors, some different styles and types of wire and some of the tools you might need in order to complete the job. So first, uh, let's take a look at, I guess, the wire. So when it comes to the wire, it's really not a case of one size fits all because it'll totally depend on the current demand of whatever you're running that wire to. So a fuel pump uh, may require, say, 20 amps of peak current or continuous current and you have to use the right gauge wire for that current demand. Uh, a sensor, on the other hand, will have very, very little current demand, so it means you can use a totally different wire to that. So we've got three wires here, but they're all very different for different sort of uses. Now, these two are actually 15 amp rated wires, but they're also quite different. So if we see there, well, it's close enough to zero, we'll zero it out, there we go. If I have a look at the outside diameter of this wire so it's 3.15 millimeters if we have a look at the outside diameter of this wire sort of it's about 2.94 so this one even though the inside strands and the wire underneath this sheath is the same and rated to the same current this one is actually sort of 0.15 millimeters thinner overall than this wire. You might think, oh, that, that doesn't really matter, who cares? Well, if you have, say, a strand of wires where you've got, like this, where you've got 12 wires inter interwoven to, with each other, think of the diameter of the cable, 12 times that 0.15, well, you've just added like an extra millimeter or so onto the diameter of your cabling. Now, if you just go to, say, your J car or wherever and just get this type of automotive wire and go, ah, oh, yeah, I'll just wire up my whole car with that, you know, sensors and all. This is where it will make a massive difference to the physical appearance and also the weight of your wiring harness. So if we then look at this kind of wire, there's 1.77 millimeters, or even this wire here, 1.45 millimeters. So this wire here is basically half the diameter of this wire here. So if you're hooking up things like your pressure sensors, your temperature sensors, all those kind of things which are very prevalent when you're doing an aftermarket ECU, this is the type of wire you want to use because this will, the loom will eventually now take up half the diameter of that and that's just a waste of weight and uh and size so now when you're running wires like this you can get very small very flexible and very neat wiring harnesses all done so that's pretty much wire choice you want to use the smallest diameter wire you can in order to complete the job so yeah pressure sensors temp sensors shock sensors front wheel speed sensor whatever it is Smallest diameter wire you can. This is 20 gauge wire, uh, has an internal cross section of uh, 0.5 millimeter squared or something like that. So that's what I use when I'm hooking up sensors and things like that because yeah, a few of these wires twisted together has a very, very small uh, total area when bundled together. So speaking of twisting wires together, I'll quickly show you now how to do that. And it's very easy and basic and you do it at home, no problems. All right, so here I've got three wires. Let's see if I measure that diameter there. 4.64 millimeters. Now, remember that uh, number because I'm gonna show you why I like to twist these wires. Now, 
pretty basic to do. All you've got to do is bunch them up so they're all sitting there flush against each other. Then I just put a little bit of the end in the vise. Always remember to cut the length a little bit longer than you need because you're going to snip that little bit off then. But also uh, when we do what we do now with the twisting, it will shrink a little bit too, so to speak. So next, all you need, cordless drill. I like cordless because corded drills can actually have a slowdown. They won't actually stop instantly, whereas a cordless one will stop instantly. So next part is just to insert the wires in. All right, so again, we want them even here. I want to have a little bit of tension on it. Just tighten the jaws. Again, you're probably going to snip these little bits off, so always just make sure you've got a bit of length. All right, so before you start, you should have some tension on the, on the cables, a little bit of tension, and they should all be bunched at the same length. So if you've got any sagging down or a bunch up, uh, just uh, loosen the chuck off and start again. So now it's just a case of uh, applying a little bit of pressure to the trigger, and you'll feel the wires pull in. So uh, you just, yeah. Twist it like this. We're looking for a couple of twists per inch. Now, don't chase it in because it might bunch up, but that's looking pretty good right about there. Next part is grab right here. So we need to hold a bit of tension on it because it could just come all unraveled straight away. And I'll just undo the chuck. And then I'm just going to slowly release the tension, let it unwind a little bit. And then that is that. You can see up here this part where the vise just mangled those bits at the end. That's pretty easily sorted by just doing that. All right, so remember at the start, the number that we had over four mil. Well, let's have a look at the cross-sectional area now. 3.36, that's a really big saving in space. You can see how flexible that is. It's not unraveling. It's nice and neat. And uh, that's perfect. All right, so that's some cable, some technique on making the cable, the wires all nice and neat for your little easy backyard install. Uh, next thing, we'll have a look at some of the connectors here. So I'm sure you're all very familiar with these type of connectors. They've been around for years and years, and they do have their place when you're looking for a cheap, easy connector to maybe extend some stuff on your trailer wiring or whatnot. But if you're, buying, if you're going to actually invest some money into making a decent loom for an expensive ECU that you might have, um, this isn't really the way to go. So let's have a look at the plugs that I like to use these days and some techniques on how to uh, use them. So while these are readily available at most auto places and they're quite cheap uh, in respect to, say, these, they do um, have their place. And yeah, like I was saying, trailer wiring and things like that, sure, no worries. But if you're going to be installing a, a relatively expensive ECU, which I mean, most aftermarket ECUs cost a fair bit of money these days. These little tabs, they're not gonna be really your go-to. The only thing holding that in the plug is this little clip here, which they can bend or be pushed back out on that, which means they don't have a great seal between male and female, which is uh, not so great. Also, something to keep in mind is if you're using thin wire like we are, this hookup wire, you can see how it sits in there and it is uh it's like a hot dog down a hallway that is a tiny wire in a big slot so that's going to create uh probably not the greatest crimp as well which is why i prefer to use these plugs and each one has its own set purpose you can get these weather pack ones as well but i mean same kind of thing a lot of these a lot of these plugs are designed around i guess larger gauge wire and more of a universal sort of that three mil four mil whatever wire if you're just going to go down to your local parts store and buy a wire off the shelf um, a lot of it's not designed around sort of this 20 gauge hookup wire so so we'll take a look now on the deutsch connectors the three different main kinds you'll probably encounter and what they're commonly going to be used for so the three common connectors you're going to encounter are going to be dtm DT or DTP. So again, just like with the different gauge wires, these three different uh, plugs have different pins which have a different current capability. So these ones, it's up to about seven and a half amps. This one, 
13 and this one 25 so you know all your sensors and things like that again these DTM ones they're super small they really work well this super small wire and they're the ones to go to so something like your 20 gauge wire that's what you want these pins something like your 16 gauge wire something that might need like a maybe a really small thermo fan or a really small fuel pump uh, that kind of thing or something where an application you're cutting and chopping up a factory loom and the wire's a little bit thicker than your 20 gauge wire that's the plug to go to and this is the stuff for like 12 gauge wire 14 gauge wire where your big current demand fuel pumps your big big thermo fans and, and water electric water pumps and things like that where the current demand's high this is what you're going to want to use so as you can see this is the pin but unlike those other pins where their terminals sort of fold over and crimp on this is just an open hole basically so how do you get wire into here and then how do you crimp it down to make a positive seal well let's run through that now i like to use some kind of automatic wire stripper just because it makes the job so easy so a uh, couple of mil off the end there you'll get used to doing this and knowing what the, the, the length is but essentially you can see the length is going to be pretty easy to work out because that's your slot and that's where you've got to put it in so give your wire a bit of a twist to make sure the ends are all sorted push it into there now we've got three different size um, of the crimpers here they are for size 12 which was our DTP size 16 which is our DT and size 20 which is our DTM so I've got these ones because this is the size, size pin I've got and it's it's literally this simple insert the pin in here put a little bit of positive pressure on it then make sure the wire can't back out and then just apply pressure crimp and that's it and now what you'll see is if I spin this 360 degrees you can see all that four ways around and at two intervals at those four different areas there's been a positive uh, crimp being put on that so if I give that a really good tug it's not going and you can see my fingers are going white because I'm pulling on it so hard but that is why I love these so much all right so now I'm going to demonstrate why I don't like using these plugs you've just bought your fancy expensive new ECU this is an actual wire from a fuel tech uh, this is the I think this is either the sensor ground or the sensor zero to five shared wire so what I'm going to do is just oop, crimp off a bit more of that there we go I'm going to get one of these pins I'm going to put it in there the wire in there I'm going to crimp and it's going to crimp it over in that W shape so it's all crimped in there yeah that's great now you saw the amount of pressure we placed on the Deutsch plug let's try and put the same pressure on this that was hardly any pressure so the wires that come with modern ECUs are generally all around this 20 gauge sort of wire if you're going to use these kind of plugs to try and crimp these wires it's not going to go well that this this stuff is designed for you know this kind of three whatever out millimeter outside diameter wire so can you use these type of plugs yes definitely um, but I'll be using it with this larger sort of diameter wire over this smaller smaller 20 gauge sort of hookup wire or if you do have to use these make sure that I'll try and grab one a couple of examples here in that so try and get the ones where the pins are these ones are a bit smaller than this one so the outside of the box I might say what size wire it is it might say 18 gauge or 20 gauge or whatever these ones are really only rated for say or meant to, to take a wire of say oh, 16 to 14 gauge and these ones you still can get away with running 20 gauge in it you just have to make sure you do the crimp really really well uh, but yeah just just make sure that if you are going to use this with the thinner gauge wires because you can only access these plugs for whatever reason that uh, you do run the ones with the smaller gap in the terminal because you'll you'll be able to do a crimp it just won't ever be as good as with the Deutsch ones because the other main reason is I'll, I'll show you so if we connect these two together here's the whatever the white one you can see movement now movement in wires 
leads to fatigue, leads to breaking wires. If I get the, the Deutsche one, now listen, a positive click, no movement. And also a weather seal that I just dropped off, um, which also means, you know, there's a tight weather seal at the back here and here, which means it's gonna be much more resistant to water ingress, which this one, nothing, just huge gaping holes everywhere in that. So another thing to consider also of why I prefer to run these over these. Now, finally, one of the other things you'll have to work out is the cost of when you're wiring in of the tools you're gonna to use. So these are generally around, I think 45 to $50 each. So if you're gonna run a car where you're gonna use these three plugs, well, you're up for maybe say, say $150 to do all of those kind of pins in your car straight up. If you're just gonna use these kind of terminals where you could do it totally on the cheap and use those really cheap $20 whatever electrical ones. If you wanted to do like a more quality job say or, or a decent terminal, so you're gonna maybe use a ratcheting one that comes with different jaws. These are maybe gonna be at $50. So straight up, you know, to run with these plugs, they're a cheaper plug, but also the tools to use them are significantly cheaper. So if these are say $150, you can get away with a $20, $20 pair of crimpers to do those. Now, something else, if you're gonna be using a lot, uh, doing a lot of wires is, good quality side cutters. So these ones are years old. Uh, they are, it uh, doesn't say there, they are made in France, not made in China, you can see just there. And the amount of wires that they've cut and even things that they probably shouldn't have cut that they have, and they're still sharp and not broken off, decent quality side cutters are a must. And then this is just a ratcheting uh, auto sort of wire stripper. Uh, the amount of strain sort of holding in one hand and stripping off the wire in those basic sort of um yeah strippers it's not worth the pain i think these things are sub around 30 dollars or whatever if if i had to spend if i had to cheap out between one of these two i would buy it i'd just i'd buy the cheaper version of this i would not cheap out and i would definitely spend money buying this because the amount of time and the strain that saves on your hands and having a set of these is worth its uh, weight in gold at 20 times over. So you can see there's also, there's some uh, basic crimpers here that, you know, they, these these sort of crimp here is not insulated. They'll actually do those too. So, I mean, you know, for the for the sake of like 35 bucks, this will strip wires and crimp those type of terminals as well as those, you know, the blue, red and yellow, whatever insulated eyelets and that kind of thing. So uh, that is something that should be in every uh, automotive guy's toolbox. All right, so this was a very basic, I'm gonna stipulate that as a basic video on easy to manage uh, plugs and wiring solutions for your car. So uh, we did some twisted wiring, not concentric twisting. That's a totally different thing. Go check out like HP Academy or something. They've got wiring courses. If you wanna learn some more wiring, hardcore nerd techniques, uh, beware if you're gonna post on groups, on Facebook groups where there are wiring nerds and ask basic questions because they'll probably savage you. They can, I've seen these groups in action before, and my God, some of these people really need to get a life. But anyway, uh, this is just a basic video on twisting wires to make it look a bit neater, more flexible and easy to use. Some basic plugs and techniques on how to use that and some better quality stuff to just to, you know, improve the quality of your work and the reliability of the wiring stuff when you're wiring up your own ECU. Because a lot of people, that's the thing they do. They buy an ECU off a supplier, say like, hey, me, Mr. Parts, and then, they have a go at wiring them themselves and often for someone like myself who my dyno tune customers cars the bulk reason that there are issues on the dyno i would say 95 percent of the case it is not mechanical it is electrical and uh, that's on you if you're going to wire up your own car so that's why i use these and i recommend these kind of plugs to people who are wiring their cars because if you're going to try and skimp and use these plugs to save maybe a hundred dollars, not even a hundred dollars while you're wiring up your own car. Guess what? You come to the dyno and you've got a problem with your car and it breaks down because it's an electrical gremlin. You'll be charged by a dyno operator more than likely around $150 an hour, maybe more to fault find that problem while the car's on the dyno. So yeah, as you can see, it's just not worth it. Do the job properly and uh, you'll actually save yourself a money long run by a long stretch. So that's pretty much it for today. Um, yeah, we'll come back next week with another tech tip on something else. Until then, catch you later.